Healing is the hardest job someone will ever do in a party, and yet they get very little love or recognition for the effort. So now we barely have healers to play with. There are four main reasons why healing is maybe the hardest it has ever been. And first, responsibility. The most underrated role in a party and raid has been the healer role for the longest time. Long enough to birth memes and jokes about blaming your healer. And the memes and jokes are funny, but who is laughing now? I have never had a harder time finding healers than in the last two expansions, basically when healing has become way more demanding. In Dragonflight, the burst healing required made me realize I was actually a very bad healer, while the healer nerfs in the War Within reinforced that even more. Am I a bad healer though? And more importantly, are you a bad healer? Or is healing just that hard? Hard enough where now we don't have enough people playing the role for us to do dungeons and raids. What? You don't have World of Warcraft yet? No problem, you can buy it cheap on Kingwin. What? You want to play 1337 other games too? No problem, you can buy them quick on Kingwin. Kingwin is an online platform that offers games, prepaid cards and gift cards at much lower prices, whether they be for WoW or even game time. Click the link down below and use our code MARS, that's M-A-R-C-E, for an 8% discount. Thank you, Kingwin. Whenever we talk about difficulty and skill, it will always be relative to each person. When we talk about doing damage or simply handling more responsibility, we can say that only the best of the healers can and should do it. Since they are so efficient with keeping people alive, they need fewer heals to do so, giving them the time to DPS and stuff. You can think of this line as a skill bar that once you reach it, you can access more elaborate healer gameplay that borders on the support role more. And this bar used to be way up here, where top M plus and even raid healers were at, where they could also do other stuff like DPSing or supporting while keeping people healthy. But now it feels this barrier has been lowered down here where almost all healers have to be at least this level to be able to clear the content. And that is, in short, why healing is so hard today. As an example, as a mage main and a DPS player, here is what I have to do going into the last boss of City of Threads, for example. Pop my cooldowns with my Spymaster Trinket. Stack on the tank and move with the party. Dodge the balls. Dodge the big ad tremor, play the roots mechanic by dispelling or DPSing, play the adds mechanic by CCing them and DPSing them, rotate defenses for the splice, tremor and umbral weave, and lastly DPS the boss to the best of my ability. Quite the list, so what would you have to do as a healer? Well, let's take a look. As a healer, I would have to prep my heals on my party, whether I life bloom my tank, myself and rejuve both of us put Efflorescence down and maybe use Iron Bark on my tank until he builds resources for mitigation. Stack on the tank for the same movement strategy. Dodge the balls and heal those who were hit by the balls. Heal the tank through the process of elimination tank buster. Dodge the tremor. Heal people after the tremor. Mega heal or resurrect the ones who did not dodge the tremor. Play the roots mechanic by dispelling or DPSing them and heal the people for taking massive damage from them. Play the adds mechanic by CCing them or and DPSing them and heal the party members that got meleeed by the adds. Rotate defenses for myself and or the party for the splice, trimmer and umbral weave aka the roots. DPS the boss if I am on shaman or paladin or discipline priest, essentially healers that need to DPS to heal. Heal the tank while doing all of the above while trickling healing on my party members since in modern WoW, being in combat puts a hidden secret debuff on people of always taking damage. And this might look like I am just doing one extra thing, but in reality it isn't because as a DPS and to a lesser extent the tank, you don't really change much of what you do based on what your party does. I still use combustion whether or not my death knight friend used the defensive or didn't dodge the orbs. But as a healer, while doing all of the above, I will have to also do some optional things that people don't actually realize they add to my rotation when they misplay. That ends up taking a lot of mana, breaks my healing cooldown scheduled sequence 
and healing combos which helped me actually be able to keep people alive through mandatory mechanics. Heal the tank for not starting the pool with a defensive and getting chunked to 20% HP. Heal the tank every time he moves out of his consecration. Doesn't stay in melees to death strike. Drops shield slam. Drops iron fur. Drops spikes. Doesn't purify stagger properly. Heal the Mongo DPS for almost getting one shot by orbs. Heal the Mongo DPS for almost getting one shot by tremor. Heal the Mongo DPS for staying in the tank buster, whether it's his fault or the tanks. Heal the Mongo DPS for staying in melee of all of the adds with aggro. Heal the DPS for not having enough defensives for all of the mechanics that rotate. Use a surprise defensive for a Mongo tank or DPS because they failed the mechanic leaving me with one less defensive for a mechanic scheduled to have a defensive resolve it. Move away in weird positions because the tank or DPS players were not following the proper pathing which makes me break my healing rotation, waste my cooldowns or combos and try to figure out how to play catch up for the rest of the time lost. And last but not least, I am a human, meaning that for every fuck up that someone else does, I might fuck up too, since I'm not a robot. But when a DPS fucks up, they lose damage, and if they die, we try to keep the fight going, squeezing a bit more damage or worst case scenario, miss the timer on the key. If I die, we wipe, and the worst case scenario is the only case scenario that ever happens. Similarly for the tank of course, but that's on their list of responsibilities. So in conclusion, I have about 20 things I need to be able to do to ensure a boss dies, twice as much as a regular DPS. This list, however specific, it's just for one boss. Not every boss has this many things, and some have even more, while packs in dungeons have different lists of their own. Then, as mentioned, everyone has their list of responsibilities. Outside super high level content where any fuck up by even non-healers can wipe the group, the heaviest of accountability will lie on the healers, with tanks close behind. The fuckups that essentially double my list of responsibilities I have to do are not always happening and not all players play the same of course, but any one of them can drastically change the outcome of an encounter to such a high degree of effect that it definitely creates pressure to perform, and if it doesn't, it just makes the gameplay less enjoyable because you know you will have to work twice as hard for the same rewards as everyone else. This is not necessarily to say that DPS and tanking is easy, but to point out that healing is hard. Hard enough where it doesn't feel like it scales with the rewards the game gives you, whether they be in the form of fun gameplay or actual items, upgrades and resources. Let me tell you how nerfing the DPS of healers contributed to healing actually becoming harder. Dealing damage as a healer has changed from past expansions where you were incentivized to actually contribute to the overall DPS of the group. That was met with mixed feelings from the community and the devs listened and lowered the amount of damage healers were capable of to a point where now it makes almost no difference if you DPS a boss when the tank does triple your damage and DPSers deal 5 to 10 times your damage. The problem is this particularly thing, exactly. As a DPS and a tank to an extent, when you become better at the game, you keep doing more damage, and the better you are, the more damage you deal and there is never enough DPS. The boss cannot die fast enough. As a healer though, there is such a thing as too much HPS, the health bar won't go past its maximum level. So what do you do when that happens? Well, you deal damage, but the damage has to be low enough to not make you feel like you are forced to deal damage by your party members or by the key timer that won't be met without your DPS. So then, the other solution for you to always have something productive to do besides healing is give you more responsibilities. That's dispelling, crowd controlling, repositioning, dealing with affixes and so on. And you will say, Flame, everyone has to do this. And you are correct, but if everyone has to do this, then healers will still have nothing to do for a good amount of time, assuming people play properly, since dealing relevant damage is off the table. So in an efficient group, it will only make sense to make the healer do all of this and let the DPSers do damage. And since my damage as a healer is so shit, I actually want to be the one to do all of this because I cannot suffer the fight lasting 10 seconds longer for every dispel a mage has to do during combustion, every crowd control a death knight has to do during pillar of frost. This is the best way to make sure we complete the encounter in time. 
Healing has improved from Dragonflight, but it 100% does not feel like it fully follows the developer ideals of being a smooth experience as long as people can still get one shot or lose more than half their HP in one hit and then die before you can finish casting a healing surge. Because healing is still so intensive, it makes everything a healer does high impact. It matters when you heal a mechanic. It matters when you hit a dispel. It matters when you interrupt a cast, as most healers anyway, because fail to do any of these things will have an array of consequences ranging from someone having to break their rotation to do it for you losing a considerable amount of DPS or them actually dying and you wiping the group. If the level of accountability is this high, it's no wonder fewer people want to heal, making you take even longer to get a group going. Burst healing being fixed can make healing easier because healing right now is a whack-a-mole on HP bars, on dispels, on CCs and interrupts that don't give you enough time to DPS since it doesn't even matter if you do. But if we can go to a world where people don't die in 2 seconds, but also cannot be healed back in 2 seconds, we can fill the gameplay of a healer with more chill healing instead of all of the non-healing gameplay we have today, leaving the non-healing gameplay to those who actually excel at it and enjoy it. This will lower the barrier of entry for healers, making more people not feel like they will be blamed for everything and maybe even enjoy healing since that's what they expect to do when picking a healer playing with people's health bars first and foremost. Last but not least is healer balance and why Resto Shaman is probably the number one healer this season. This refers to raw healing but also the toolkit you come with because if you remember, modern healing has to come with a lot of supporting on top of actual healing. So Resto Shamans that have poison cleansing totem and a curse dispel easily puts them on top of dealing with the deadliest mechanics in the season. Not to mention that the affixes are so specific that you need particular tools to deal with them and wouldn't you know it, Resto Shaman can deal with all of them. When I heal on Holy Paladin and Devour happens, I legit have to heal all 5 party members for their entire HP bar or however big the absorb is. As a Holy Paladin, this means using healing cooldowns, which is the only way I can actually heal, to handle a mechanic taking away those cooldowns that are supposed to be used for an actual healing moment. So ever so often, some healers just need extra spells in their spell books to do what Resto Shaman does with one talent point spent into Poison Cleansing Totem or Priest into Mass Dispel, but that's on such a long cooldown that it doesn't even compare. And add to this stuff like Discipline Priest not being able to heal the party properly without targets and you get into a situation where a lot of healers that don't play certain specs think they cannot or won't want to do the content, or even get invited to it. At which point does this stop being a skill issue and starts being a design issue instead? Just like how we mentioned in a previous video, the high keys where you can find the skill to make all of these issues not matter is less than half the player base, but even less than 10% for plus 10s and higher keys. I'm not saying it's all bad. Obviously, some people enjoy it, and I had fun healing more difficult content than I did in the past, but overall the numbers don't lie and it's not just the elitist, sweaty tryhards that play the game. But if you do decide to take on the most difficult role in Mythic Plus and meta matters for you, this is the current ranking of healers in Mythic Plus, based on how high people clear keys, how many they clear, and the dreams they let trickle down for us regular folk.